talk about Love and Hip Hop season four, um, episode three. It starts off where um, Rich and Peter Guns is meeting up because Peter is still stressed out from the shit that happened with Amina or whatever. After he, after she left his ass up or whatever in the club, I mean, at, in front of the club, or whatever. So he goes tells Rich on how messed up this situation is or whatever. And that he's really scared for Tara to find out. But he must tell Tara. He's going to tell her tomorrow. All this bullshit. So, Rich is kind of trying to be sympathetic to him. But Rich knows this is a real fucked up situation when it comes to him. He said how he knows he, you know, they can be creeps. But he's also a good man. And he was like, well, how can I be a creep and a good man? And, he, you know, he was like, this is a creep situation. But you don't want to hurt nobody. So, then that makes you a good person or whatever. You know, they always got to make up an excuse for the bullshit that they doing. You know, I guess they trying to pump each other up for their bullshit. So, anyway, like I said, he's going to tell her tomorrow, yada, yada, yada. So, then we see Joe Budden. He's in the strip club, smoking on the hookah, whatever. And Naya walks in, looking like she just got off the pole or came from the back, putting the rest of her clothes on. I don't know. But she talks to him about, she wants to get advice from Joe about her music career. Because she's worked with um, Kendrick Lamar. She's worked with Jada Kid. She's worked with Wop Wop Wop. Bitch, I ain't never heard of you. I'm just saying. I don't like Naya, so if I go in on Naya to all her little fans or whatever, oops, too bad. Because I, I, I'm not feeling her, and I'm going to tell y'all why in a minute. So, they talked in, she was telling him how she opened up for Kendrick, how she's got this song with Jadica, she got the song, wop, wop, wop. So, then she also tells him how she met up with Erica and she wants to do a song with Erica. He like, oh, hell no. And it wasn't like he was saying that Erica was bad, per se, but he was just basically saying like, she ain't nobody, you ain't nobody, so this not going to really be a good look for either one of y'all. And I think that was the same thing, I think, when it came to L'Oreal and Erica. Like, this is not going to be a good look because neither one of y'all own yet. So, I think that's what he basically was trying to say about Erica. And he basically tell her, like, to focus on you. You can't be trying to get somebody else on, you know, work with somebody when you're trying to get your shit up off the ground. So, really focus on you. Um, He called Erica a plane crash. <laughs> At least that's what I got off the shit. That he caught her a plane crash. But he was telling her to make better decisions. Things that's going to fit for her. Because he was like, when she mentioned Erica, he's like, okay, well, let me put it to you like this. And he was like naming all these people. And he would name Erica. And he like showed her like, Erica don't fit into the people you trying to work with. So, anyway, after that, Tara meets up with um Peter. This motherfucker has the nerve to call her before work and tell her about his situation. And I was like, are you serious? So you finna make her take all them emotions back to work for real? Oh, I'm so mad. I just broke my bracelet. But, um, and I just bought it. It's a really cute bracelet. So I just, I don't know what it was about this bracelet, but I bought it because it was, it was just different. So anyway, um, I just broke it though, man. But, um, so he calls her in the studio or whatever, and he tells her about Amina. He basically tells her he fucked up, so he lets her know that they they he smashed, because he basically like was like I smashed, but he didn't tell her that they were married or whatever. And I was like, if you gonna tell one thing, tell every fucking thing. Don't try to sugarcoat it for somebody else's feelings. When you already hurt them, you might as well go for the whole thing and get the shit up out the way, especially if you trying to work some shit out or you trying to spare that person feelings or whatever the case may be tell everything don't just tell bits and pieces and then when she find out then she going all that hurt is just going to flush right back flutter right back up for her so she was asking him basically like how long this been going on and he was like for a while he never wanted to tell her for a year because remember you introduced this bitch to her at the little thing at I mean a showcase so he really didn't want to tell her for how long she started slapping the shit out of him she was kept on hitting him and he was like stop fighting me she was like well stop fucking I roll because I was like yes like come on now like you don't want her to hit you but you want to hurt her and that's the only way 
my thing is women sometimes you have to back up on hitting the wrong people but i can not say that i'm glad that he didn't turn around and yoke her ass up or something like that because she was fucking him up i mean she wasn't like putting bruises on him or anything like that but she was slapping the shit out of him and which he deserved he deserved every swing punch tap whatever you want to call it he deserved it so she kind of basically leaves she's really hurt she leaves then we have Erica meets up with her, um, Erica Jean meets up with her best friend, Mystic. They shopping or whatever. And she basically tells her that her and Saigon is back dating. Mystic is not feeling that shit because she's like, the things that you have told us, like, we don't know him. But the things that you have told us, why would we want to support this relationship? And this is my thing with women. Stop telling your good girlfriend. Stop telling your parents about your dude dogging the shit out of you and then you want to still be with him because this is the reaction that you get your friends is not going to be supportive of this kind of situation if you have always went back and um dogged this dude out or dogged your female out or whatever the relationship is so if you want to keep shit cool don't tell nobody your intimate details or personal shit about him then after she tells her about them getting back together you tell her oh he wants a dna test Really, Erica, that didn't make him seem better. But, you know, Mystic is like, give it to him. If this will prove to him and you guys can, you know, you can show him that this is his baby, give it to his ass. And I was down with that, too. Like, give it to him. If this is what he wants to ease his conscience, especially the way you guys' the relationship went, then give it to him. So, she's, she, she's going to agree to it because she said Mystic has some great advice. Um, Amina meets up with Peter. Um, he they haven't seen each other since the little whole little nightclub situation happened. Um, sh he tells her how he told Tara, and she she figured that shit out right then and there. Like you didn't tell her everything. Did you tell her you love me? He was like, No, I didn't want to hurt her. And I'm like, So you gonna dog your wife out? Like for real? Really? But. You know, these bitches so dumb and over dick. I don't get it. So, they, um, you know, basically Amina's like, fuck it. You ain't gonna tell her. I'm gonna tell her her ass. She didn't tell him that. But, that's basically what happened. Um, Amina said that she, I don't know. It's something about her that she tells Peter that, um, she just want Peter to confess to everybody that he loves her. And I'm sitting there like, that's not going to happen when you were the side piece. And you agreed to marry this man when you knew he was not even, not just only living with this woman, but he had kids with this woman and living with her at the same damn time. So there's no way he's going to confess his love to you to nobody but his homeboys. You will never be confessed his love to his kids. You will never be known to his mama and his daddy and his you know brothers and sisters or whatever you will only be known as oh that's the girl i smashed because that's what he labeled you as just saying so um after that erica meets up with naya that situation because they they first the conversation was going cool naya just wanted to basically know was Erica on board with the situation? Was she really into her music? Did she really want to do this track? Erica's like, yeah, I'm busy, but I want to do this track. So, Naya started rapping, you know, her little part, showing Erica what she wanted, you know, how what kind of direction she wanted to go. Erica was liking it. I was like, whatever, shit don't make no sense to me. Besides, you want to lay in the bed and play with your money, but you're going to be lonely doing that. I don't know. But I, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm all for the independent woman. I really am. But, I'm just saying, you need some sex in your life to keep it going. I don't get what a bitch be like, oh, it's all about my paper, and there's no intimacy in your life. But you're going to always be miserable and always be bitter. I'm just saying. Um, so, they start talking about the record or whatever. And after she do her little rap part, Naya just basically tells Erica she wants her to focus on her music because she ain't been hearing her focus and wah, wah, wah. Erica's like, bitch, ain't nobody heard your music either. And I'm just like raising my hand like, hello, I ain't never heard of this hoe. Who, who, who is Nia Lee? Never heard of her. I mean, true enough, Erica, ain't nobody checking for your ass either. But we have, she, she has been on a season of Love and Hip Hop, so we have heard the song. Whether we liked it or not, we heard the song. I don't know if it's getting any record play, because where I live at, it ain't getting no record play. But I'm just saying, 
we've heard of her. I've never heard. I've heard of Erica since she was on the Kardashian show. I've never heard of Naya. So my thing is, Naya, I don't care how good you are. Humble yourself, boo-boo. You on this show for the first season. And I understand you this boss chick. Wop, wop, wop. You hard as fuck. But ain't nobody gonna check for you with this kind of attitude. Ain't nobody gonna check for your music. I ain't never heard Kendrick Lamar shout you out. You wasn't on the cypher with them. Just saying. Um. So, anyway. She, you know, she just always popping off. I'm not feeling her. So, anyway. Tara and, um, she got home. She looking. This part I could have deal without. Mona, what the fuck was this? This sad ass video moment of Tara crying and looking at, um, Peter pictures. I, I could have dealt without that shit. She wiping her, uh, fixing her makeup, crying and shit. I could have really deal without all of that whole little two minutes of that segment. Um, Yandy and Tara meet up. She tells Yandy about the situation with, um, Amina and Peter. Yandy is basically not trying to tell her, but she was just like, how did you know? Did you have to find out from somebody? Did he tell you? She like, he told me, you know. But she was like, I only think he told me because, you know, shit was about to hit the fan, basically. So, Yandy is, was like, it's two type of side chicks. <laughs> side hoes, whatever. The ones that don't care and the stupid ones. And my thing is, I think both of them bitches fit in that category. Just tell, just, just being honest. Don't act like this is the first time that Tara heard about Peter doing this shit. And she went, she went back to him. So, bitch, sometimes you keep going through this and this is what you get. I mean, hey, it was a fucked up situation, but she went back to him after he had already did the same situation to her. So, in a way, I feel bad for her, and then in a way, I don't. Because my thing is, if you're going to let this motherfucker come back, hey, you have the chance of him doing this all over again. I always say it's one chance for me to find out some shit, regardless of how many times you did it or where you're doing it at. It only takes me one time to find out about it, and I'm done. I, I, I don't care. There's no nothing else you could say to me besides we could be cool. That's it. Um. So anyway, after they talk, Tara's hurt, but she still says she's gonna find where that bitch at. So whatever. Um. Erica and her girlfriend, we they get introduced to another segment that I could have deal with without the little two minutes, but I guess we have to be introduced to Erica's girlfriend. They meet up for dinner. Her name is Sam Santana. She's never been with a girl before, so she really wants to take it slow. With Erica, especially knowing who Erica is, she really wants to take it slow with her. Um, like I said, could have deal without that segment. Um, to here he goes to Joe's house. He's there listening to music or whatever. So they're talking because she wants to tell him about her getting the little movie role. She's gonna be gone for the six weeks on some island or whatever. He is giving her this long story about their relationship when she just happens to look down and see a hair on the bed. She like, who hair is this? He like my friends. In your bedroom? I don't know. Maybe he maybe he can your friend. I don't know. From Real Housewives. Because that's the only time to think think this shit is cute to be doing some shit with your friend. Ain't nowhere in the world, ain't none of my friends, my my dude friends, female friends, are gonna be in my room. Mm mm. That bitch can't stand outside on the porch. Or, you know, I I, I no, I don't. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. She couldn't even be in my house when I'm not there. Because there's some shysty, dirty bitches. So, bitches can't even be in my... Bitch, if you over 18, you can't even be in my house. I'm just saying. Call me insecure or whatever. But that's not insecurity. That's just being fucking smart. Because there's some ratchet bitches in the world. If this is my eighth bone cone bitch I grew up with since day one, yeah, and I know how that bitch roll... Then, yeah, because I got some bitches that roll that will fuck somebody else's man. Them bitches can't come over my house. No, 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 no way, Jose, why I'm not home. But, hey, she found the hair in Joe's bed because it's not about me. She found the, he gives her this sad-ass story. She noticed that he changed the sheets. Joe, that was, <laughs> women is going to notice that type of shit. Then when she fight, then this motherfucker didn't even go wash the sheets. He put them to the side like she wasn't going to never, ever come back over again. And when she looked at the shit, it had foundation on the pillowcase. So, therefore, this bitch had to be laying down talking to you on a pillow like this. What a, uh -uh, no way, no, not in the bed. Uh -uh. Like, bitch, you couldn't get on the chair, sit on the floor against the wall. Bitch, first of all, like I said, you wouldn't even be in my room. That was just violation number one. So, anyway, 
to hear you start going off or whatever, and she leaves. So then Rich and Amina meets up, and, um, was it Amina? No, no, no. <laughs> Rich and Yandy meet up. And Rich and Yandy meet up. They want to talk about Amina. And they want to know if they really want to work with this girl or not. Yandy tells Rich about the Tara knowing about Amina. Rich tells Yandy about Peter making, because she was just like, what did he think that was going to happen? They was going to meet up. And he was like, um, she was like, the girl didn't even come to the party. And Rich was like, yes, she did. Peter just snatched her ass up real fast before she came in that party. So then Yandy was talking about how Tara is looking for Amina right now. And she's going to find her ass. So Rich was like, you know, this is business. I understand all they shit they going through is personal, which is a fucked up situation with bitches. This is business. We need to make money off this bitch. We need to go see her show, and we need to make some money off this bitch. Yandy understands, because Yandy, like I said, she don't give a fuck where the talent come from, or if you have talent. As long as she can make money off of you, that's what she gonna do. So they decide that they're gonna go to the show. She says she's gonna tell Tara that she's going to the show, because she didn't want Tara to show up and then see her up in there chilling. That's, a, that, you know, that's understandable. So then we have Saigon and Erica. They meet up. They, I mean, well, they at um, his house. I guess that's his house because she's he's not allowed in her house. So they at his house and she agreed to the DNA test. So he went and bought a home DNA test like this shit was a home EBT. Like it was going to, you know, turn two lines. I don't know. But I guess he said the, the results come back close to his birthday. So they're going to get them results. They're going to try to, they trying to work this shit out. She trying to be open, honest, and she feel like if I can gain his trust like this, let's do this test. Whatever. So then we have Erica Mina, and she meets, she goes to the, uh, I guess the studio, his office where Rich work, and she basically tells him um, how, she, they both talk about Naya, and how big headed she is. Uh, Erica was like, she ain't going to be picking no money but off the strip club floor or some shit like that, and I was like, Erica's always throwing jabs. But I understand what she's saying. Because, like I said, I don't like her. Because, like no, like I said, nobody knows who she is. And she's acting like she's Nicki Minaj or the brat or some shit. Like, we supposed to know who this girl is. So, they get off of that. She's telling him, you know, he like, what's up? And she's basically telling him all these, you know, different ventures, events or whatever she has. She has a calendar. She has um, a sex book. And he like, what's up with the sex book? And she's telling him about the sex book. Then she tells him about her girlfriend. So, you know, she was just telling him how they're going to try to take it slow. But she likes this girl because she's sensitive. She ain't rich. She's young. She's ya, ya, ya. So, Rich is cool with it. You know, he could look kind of salty. But he cool with it. He's probably trying to think in the back of his mind. Shit, I'm going to get in where I fit in. I don't know. So, then we have Amina's show at the end. And Yandy and them checking her out or whatever. She sings. Um, whatever, whatever. I don't know what the fuck she was singing, but she sounded okay. Like I said, I'm not hating on her talent, because I said the girl got talent. Wouldn't buy her album, because that ain't the music I listen to, but the girl got talent. Um, so after she comes over there, you know, Yandy's looking at her with a side eye or whatever. She ended up coming over there to talk to them. And Yandy basically was throwing jabs at her and asking her. First, she was asking about her music, but she was also throwing jabs at her. Rich picked up on that, but dumbass Amina didn't pick up on it. And, but that's because Amina don't know that Yandy know the situation. So then, as Yandy talked with her, and Yandy was like, so if you a star, if you a star, why are you playing second? As she says this, Tara walks in. And when Tara walks in, I immediately said Yandy has something to do with that. And Tara said it in a confessional that Yandy told her where the girl was. I thought that was messy as shit. You supposed to be there to do business, and you brought some bullshit to her business. That was messy as shit, and I wasn't here for that, Yandy. I'm sorry. You supposed to be this big ass business woman. If this was your event, you wouldn't like that type of shit. So, Tara walks in or whatever. Um, Amina, Amina knows like this is so. This is what you meant, Yandy. So then Tara and Tara start going back and forth, back and forth, and Amina was just basically like. I, I only knew about one kid. I didn't know about the other kid. He told me he's only staying there before the kids. Because she was like, well, what you thought? He was my roommate or whatever. Like, you, what you thought? And she was just basically like, bitch, no. He told me he was there for the kids. He wasn't there for you. So then she was like, look, he loves me. He loves me. Tara said, show me the proof. My thing is, some things, if you don't want to know the answer to, don't ask. <laughs> because Amina showed her the proof. Amina threw down some damn card. 
I don't know where you get cards at to show you marriage. I don't know you get a certificate. Maybe this is a New York thing. I don't know. But we get papers when you get married. A little certificate paper. Not some little cards that are like a business card. But she threw that shit down and was like, because we married. And she was... When she did that, Tara snapped and slapped her a few times. It wasn't one time. I saw a few times that Tara slapped the shit out of her. Which was disturbingly... You know, she deserved it. But... Like I said, that was her business. She was just like on a small break. She still had to go back up there and sing. And she had just got her ass whooped in her own damn event. I, that was kind of fucked up to me. But Rich was over there laughing and shit. Yandy was kind of breaking them up. But I was just like, this shit is off the chain. We're going to see it next week where she um throws Peter shit out. So, hey, we'll look forward to that. But anyway, this was my review for Love and Hip Hop New York, Season 4, Episode 3. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I do everything by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. Oh, yeah, follow me on Google Plus, too. Like I said, I don't know how to do that shit, but I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, follow my girl, Ashley Miller. Check her out. Ashley Miller, 1987, might be 801. Scotty from Mr. Still Standing. Candy from Sweet Addictions. And much love from KY. Also, Bonnie Blue. Check all of us out. We'll talk to you as you talk to us. All right, peace.